Welcome to Lone Crow Adventures, the channel where we talk about all things camping, hiking, and backpacking. If it's your first time here, consider hitting that subscribe button. There is a ton of great content on this channel I know you'll enjoy. Today I'm going to be showing you the gear that I'm bringing with me on an extended road trip down to Texas. We're going to be camping across three states and we're going to be gone for over a week. Now the loadout's going to be a little different from a traditional backpacking trip because we've got the Jeep the whole time. So let's go. So let's start with the obvious. This is not a backpacking trip. So the type of gear that I'm going to be bringing with me is going to be very different from what you've seen in my other videos. This is a road trip. So as long as it fits in the Jeep Grand Cherokee, then it's game for coming on this trip. So you're going to get to see a lot of exciting car camping luxury type items in this video. We're going to be gone for 10 days and we're going to be camping across three different states. We're starting our journey from central Illinois and we're going to be driving down camping in Oklahoma, New Mexico and Texas and we're going to hit the southern border of Texas right on the border of Mexico. Super excited for this trip and I'm super excited to share some of the gear that I'm bringing on this road trip with you guys. So let's hit up my garage. So welcome to the beautiful disaster that is my garage. The gear that you see here is the gear that I am going to be bringing to Texas. So it's not really a whole lot of gear in terms of a road trip. A couple reasons for that. Number one, it is going to be winter time, so there's not a lot of summertime activities that we're going to be partaking in. So we're not going to be doing any swimming, we're not going to be doing any kind of kayaking or canoeing or anything like that. And we also can't have fires at any of the places that we're staying. All of the national parks where we are staying have fire bans, so everything is gonna be cooked on the MSR reactor stove. So we're not gonna to have to carry any kind of fire creation tools or fire maintenance tools with us. So that kind of cuts down the amount of stuff that we're gonna bring. So this is just our, I guess, base weight, you would call it, for what's going in the Jeep. And I've got all the consumables upstairs, which I will show you guys that in a few minutes. So let's go through these items one by one. My sleep pad. Let's talk about the sleep pad first. Look at this thing. I mean, it is huge. This, quite honestly, is just as comfortable as my bed at home. It is the X-Ped Mega Mat, and it is just awesome. It actually kind of feels like you're sleeping on a memory foam mattress. And it has a super high R value of 9.6, because those desert nights are going to be pretty cold. We're looking at some temperatures in possibly the low 20s or high teens. So since I'm taking the Jeep, I'm bringing out the big guns to help keep me warm. So I've got one of these for me and one of these for my wife. All right, so let's talk about the biggest sleeping bag that you have ever seen in your entire life. This is the Browning Neg 30 Yukon, and this is actually a 12 pound sleeping bag. So I am bringing the warmest sleeping bag that I own, even though it's totally gonna be overkill for the temperatures that I'm encountering, because I don't want to be cold. And if I can avoid it, I don't wanna have to sleep in underlayers and a puffy vest and a toque and all these extra things. I would really honestly just like to be able to wear the normal pajamas that I normally wear at home and I have a guarantee of being able to do that if I use this gigantic huge sleeping bag. So since I've got the space for it, may as well throw it in the Jeep. For my tent, I am bringing the Eureka Midori 6. This is a fantastic tent. I love it for car camping, especially when I'm bringing big gear. Normally I use this when I have my cots, but this time I'm obviously gonna have the X-Ped mats, but those are pretty big mats. They're 30 inches wide, and I think they're about 77 inches long. So using this six person tent, I'm still gonna have a nice amount of walkway next to the zipper so that I don't have to step in and step onto the mat. I can step right onto the tent floor. 
The other thing I like about this tent is that I can just unzip it and I can step right into the tent. I don't have to do the limbo underneath the zipper like what I do with my backpacking tent and crawl around on my hands and knees to get in and out. This is a walk in and walk out. It's go big or go home, baby. Now, I don't get to have a fire at any of the places where we're going to be camping because there is a fire ban. So for ambiance and for lighting, I am using the Coleman Lantern. I'm going to be transporting it in this nice plastic transport case. And I have this little ditty bag attached to it, and that's where I keep the Coleman funnel, some extra mantles, and matches to light the lantern. So this is going to be setting the mood and setting the ambiance is the lantern, not a fire. I'm bringing two different tarps on this trip. I've got two different shapes, two different sizes, and two different utilities for these tarps. The first one is the Dragonfly Pro Tarp by East Hills Outdoors, and it is a flat cut rectangular tarp. So I'm going to be using this either as a footprint underneath of my tent or to tarp the top of the tent, just depending on what the weather conditions are going to be. The second tarp is made by Wise Owl Outfitters, and it is a hex cut tarp. And this is what I had been previously using for hammock camping. So I'm bringing this specifically in case I need to set up a quick temporary rain shelter. Now, I don't anticipate that I'm gonna actually need either of these tarps because I am camping in the desert, but they don't take up much room to just roll and stick under the seat of the Jeep just to have with me. You know, you never know. I feel really torn about what camping chair to bring with me. Initially, I was going to bring the Trekology Easy Go backpacking chair, and that was basically because I thought that I was going to be able to have campfires and that I would need the space inside the Jeep to be able to purchase firewood along the way. Now knowing that there's a fire ban everywhere that I'm going, space isn't as much of a consideration. So I might decide to ditch the lightweight backpacking chair just because this is a little bit more tedious to set up and takes more time. And I might decide to go with this chair here, which is the Coleman director style chair. I really enjoy it because it has a nice table for me to set anything that I'm using, and it also has a drink cup holder. So if I have the space inside of the Jeep by the time everything gets packed, I'll probably choose to go with this director style chair because it is just super comfortable and it's really easy to pack up. In order to pack it up, you just pull it together, pop it down, and then you're on your way versus the backpacking chair that you have to deal with the telescoping poles and then you have to pull the canvas. So when you have multiple pack ups and you're trying to get on the road quickly, that backpacking chair takes a little more time. So if we've got space, I'd like to go with the trusty Coleman chair. Now when it comes to water bottles, I'll probably just use a regular plastic water bottle when I go on my day hikes because I'll only be hiking for a few hours. But these are going to be essential pieces of equipment. And what these are, I don't know if you've ever heard of them, but they're bottle keepers. So what you do is you untwist the bottom, you stick your beer bottle in there, hook it back up, and then it fully conceals your beer bottle in case you're at any dry parks. Shh, don't tell the ranger. Speaking of day hikes, there's a couple pieces of equipment that I'm bringing with me and one of them are my Woods Ascent trekking poles. These are great trekking poles. I got these when I was in northern Canada about three years ago and I've been using them ever since. Really nice ergonomic handles and really, really reliable. So these are going to be making the trip and I will be using these on a variety of different trails that we're going to be going on. Now, in terms of a day pack, I am going with this little guy here. This is the Cotopaxi Luzon 18 liter pack. And the nice thing about this is that it's a fully self-contained little pouch. So you just unzip it and this pack fully turns in on itself, kind of like a popple. 
if you were a kid from the 80s, you know what I'm talking about. It's like a popple pack. And then it just turns into this small little backpack. It's a frameless backpack, obviously. But this thing is great for day hikes where you're only going to go for three or four hours, which is exactly what we're going to be doing on this road trip. I can throw some rain gear inside of here. I could throw an extra layer inside of here for insulation, water, snacks, all the stuff that I'm going to need to do a trail that's three or four hours long. This guy is going to be essential. So the Cotopaxi 18 liters coming on the trip along with the trekking poles. I'm road tripping in the absolute lap of luxury. I'm bringing my own portable toilet and bathroom. So this is the Luggable Lou. Essentially, it's a bucket that has a specially made lid that is shaped like a toilet seat. I use toilet chemical and trash bags in here to keep everything nice and sanitary. And this way I never have to use those disgusting public pit toilets. I use the King Kip multi tent as my bathroom structure and I will put a link right up here so that you guys can check out my entire bathroom setup if you're so interested. This structure also doubles down as a portable shower. So I have my kitty litter bucket that I use as a water receptacle and inside of here I have my battery operated shower head. And this way I can make sure that I can get cleaned up at least a couple times while I'm on this trip. I'm going to be going 10 days and I'm not going to have access to a shower for 10 whole days. And I'm just not interested in stinking for that long. So I am bringing the entire bathroom set up with me to make sure that I can stay squeaky clean on my road trip. The cooler that I'm bringing with me is the Orca 75 quart cooler. This is a pretty great cooler. It keeps ice for several days at a time. And the other thing it'll do in freezing temperatures, it'll also prevent the food on the inside from becoming frozen. So it is kind of a dual purpose item for us on this trip. We open up this cooler, nice big capacity. I bought this extra little basket so I can keep some smaller items nice and organized at the top. And on the back of the cooler, it has this nifty little gear lock back here. So I've got a couple of bungee cords back there, so it just offers some extra storage. So this is a great cooler option for a road trip. Massive capacity, and it fits really nice into the back of the Jeep so that I can load ice into it, and I can grab drinks out of it when I stop. Great, great cooler. In this bag here, I have everything that I need for my cook kit. I like to keep it in this dry bag just for ease and convenience. So I've got a couple of travel mugs. The reason I chose travel mugs is I can make my coffee in the morning and I can get camp packed up and then I can have coffee ready to go in the car for when we hit the road so that I can sip and enjoy it on some of those long drives that we're going to have between our destinations. Making the coffee this time around, I've chose the MSR Mug Mate, and that's just to keep the mess down to a minimum. I don't want to have to have pots and pans and stuff I have to wash out or a percolator I have to wash out. So the only thing I have to rinse out is this little filter here. The main stove that I'm using is the MSR Reactor. I've chosen this one because it boils water really quickly and it has a 1.5 liter capacity so it's going to be great for rehydrating the MREs that we're going to be eating on this trip. Also inside of here, I have a couple of titanium spoons. So these are what we're going to be using to get the food out of the bottom of those mountain house bags, these titanium spoons. And then of course I have my match kit that I'm going to use to light my stove. So pretty basic cook system for this trip. Just rehydrating meals. That's the only thing that we're doing. We're not doing any fancy culinary stuff out there on the road. Just hydrating so that we can get the nutrients and get back on the road. So, 
the bag of random. Now what's in the bag of random? A bunch of random things, most of which I will never use, but I like to have with me on those extended road trips just in case. There are three things in this bag that I use on almost every car camping trip, and that is garbage bags, Ziploc bags, and paper towels. The rest of the stuff in here are things like extra bug spray, extra sunscreen, I've got extra guy ropes, extra straps, I've got some carabiners in here, I've got gear repair tape, a roll of duct tape, I also have a little floaty for my keys in case I ever am somewhere and decide to go on an impromptu canoe or raft trip. And I also carry around a bottle of anti-diarrhea pills. And the reason for that is you never know when you're traveling when you're going to come across bad food or bad water and end up being really, really sick. So I always carry those in the bag of random. Haven't needed them, touch on wood, but I like to have them just in case. Now for fuel, I always bring way too much fuel on a car camping trip because space and weight don't really matter and I don't want to have to mess around with trying to find fuel in case I run out. So I have a ton of isobutane. I probably have, oh I don't know, 60 ounces of it or so and that is way more than I think I'm going to need but I am going to be heating up water to take at least a couple of showers, so I'm gonna need some extra fuel for that. I also have a full bottle of Coleman Blend Fuel for my lantern. I don't think I'm gonna need this much, but again, I don't wanna have to search around for a gas station that sells this when I'm in the middle of the desert. So when I'm car camping, I always bring way too much fuel because I can't, I'm not worried about weight. Now the other thing that I'm bringing with me, or at least I think I'm bringing with me, is this Reese Explore rack. I have a nice canvas bag that goes on the back of it, and this way I can put some of the gear that I just showed you onto this rack to save some room in the Jeep. Now once I get my clothing and all my consumables packed, I might not need this rack, and I honestly would really prefer not to have to use it because it's kind of an aggravation to put this on the Jeep and you have to take your license plate off and strap it to the back of the rack and then you're stuck driving around for 10 days with this rack on the back of your jeep so if i don't need to use this i really would prefer not to but it's nice to know that i've got the extra storage in the event that i am going to need it so we'll just have to see how things shake down once i get the clothing packed and all of the consumables finally the last item that i am bringing with me is a flying saucer you might be thinking, why are you bringing a flying saucer to the desert? Well, that's because I am going to the White Sands in New Mexico, and I heard that one of the pastimes there is to slick up the bottom of one of these and slide down the sand dunes. So I plan on having a ton of fun saucering around in the deserts and having a good old time in the sand. So I've decided I'm going to bring my Superman flying saucer We'll just see what happens. Well, thanks for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed the video and I hope that you learned something new. Make sure to stay tuned. We're gonna have some more videos coming up from all of our adventures that we're gonna have on our road trip. But in the meantime, check out a few of my other videos and hit that subscribe button. There is a ton of great content on this channel. We'll see you next time, folks, on the trails.